Well, good day. The sun is trying to come out and shine. It's uh, a small reprieve from the cold, it's still damp and cool. Um, I have this passport here. I want to tell you a story. It, it's quite wrinkled. You can see that it's seen better days. But, uh, oh yeah, I was, uh, had been spending time in the Air Canada lounge at the Frankfurt International Airport in Germany. And uh, the lounges are great. You get a chance to have a shower and have a little bit to eat and put your feet up and wait for your flight. Uh, we just... Uh, come in from uh, Nigeria and uh, we had you know four or five hours or so to maybe six seven hours we had a long wait before our flight back to Toronto and from Toronto then back to the east coast of Canada and uh, it was wonderful and the time came to catch the flight back that that I should head back to the uh, departure gate and so I I like the, the lounge is outside the security zone. You can go outside and whatever, uh, which is fine. So you had to go back through security. And I approached these two tall uh, German guards with their machine guns, and I passed them my very, very wrinkly passport. And uh, the one guy took it, and he, he looks at it, and he says, you really should be careful not to run your passport through the washing machine. It's not good for it. And I said, I never passed that through the washing machine. I said, the rainforest did it. And he looked at me and he said, what? I said, the rainforest did it. And I gave a quick explanation of what took place. And uh, he turned to his partner there and he held up, you know, the air quotes. He went, right, the rainforest did it. And he passed me back my passport and told me not to run it through the washing machine. And I could go through and I could hear him giggling in behind here. Um, it didn't matter what I said. I couldn't convince him. So let's go back a day from that point that with my encounter with the German uh, security guards. I, uh, we just finished teaching... Uh, course, several courses to new pastors or pe uh, young people that were becoming pastors in uh, the northern part of Ghana in West Africa in a s town called Tamale. Uh, by the way, if you're in Tamale in Ghana, there's a restaurant there called Swad. Um, we nicknamed it Simply Wicked and Delicious. All oh, the food is on. Believable. Anyway, we had been teaching up there for quite a while, and uh, it was time to go home, and, and we had a day before we caught our flight out of Accra, the capital. And so we tried, decided to go down to Cape Coast, and we drove down there to see the uh, slave castle in Cape Coast, an old Portuguese castle that was renovated into harvesting and keeping, killing uh, slaves and preparing them to put them on ships to head to North America. It was, and still is today when I think about it, a very sobering experience. When we finished there, uh, we went north just a little bit into Cancun, um, Kakum, Kakum National Park, and uh, which took up a big chunk of the southern rainforest. And we were going to go up into the rainforest canopy. And there were suspension walkways and uh, tree houses and intersecting and you could walk up high in the canopy and look down at elephants and leopards and monkeys that were there and the birds and 
the views and the smells. It was it was unbelievable. Uh, we stopped in the parking area and we had to walk up. It seemed like to me we we're walking up the side of Mount Everest. It was a long climb uh, to get up there. It was hot. I mean, it was hot and humid. And uh, by the time I got to the top, even before we went up in the canopy, I was already half soaked with sweat. Uh, then we had to climb up a set of steps, uh, wooden steps to the beginning of these suspension walkways. Now they're just very narrow, maybe even that narrow, and with rope. And you'd walk in there and the rope would collapse in on you a little bit and you'd have to shuffle your way a long way off the ground but in the canopy and you could walk in different directions and uh, uh, it was amazing. I really, really enjoyed it. But it was, if I thought it was hot down at the bottom of this hill where we parked, up in the canopy itself where the humidity and heat were trapped, by the time I finished walking through there, I was soaking wet. It's almost like I just had my clothes on and I walked into the ocean. There wasn't a square inch of my skin or my clothes that was dry. And we finished and headed back down to the park and I realized that I had my passport in my pocket. And my passport was soaking wet. And when I got in the vehicle, I, I was carefully would peel the, all the pages were stuck together, soaking wet. And I, tried to peel them apart without ruining anything because I needed my passport. And, and I asked around, I got some tissues and stuff to put in between each page. Then I put it in a bag that we had with some desiccant. Someone had a camera case or whatever, a little pouch of desiccant. Uh, put that in there, trying to absorb the moisture out of the passport. And when we got back to the guest house that evening, I had it open with a fan trying to uh, dry it out, but it still looked like it had been through the Boer War and back. Um, but I didn't really care. This Actually, this is the passport here. And you can see that it's, even now, uh, it's still wrinkled. And... Uh, but even in the wrinkled passwords, I talked about the password, it has memories. I have uh, of visas for different places that I've gone, different countries that I've traveled to. I've been very spoiled, and uh, it's just, uh, just full of uh, Burkina Faso. That was already a good one. And uh, <laughs> here's the German stamps from the guy who went, sure, the rainforest did it. Anyway, um, Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6 says this. And without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. It's impossible to please God apart from your faith. And why? Because anyone who won't who wants to approach God must believe both that he exists and that he cares enough to respond to you and respond to those who seek him in faith. How does this apply to us? Well, it doesn't apply. I mean, it applies to all of us in some sense, but um, sadly, there are some people who would call themselves Christians who try to live their life on their own strength, try to live life with their own works, with their own knowledge, with their own wisdom. And as a result, they don't please the Lord. Well, why? Because they're not trusting in his word. Uh, faith is the evidence of things not seen. And faith in, in God's word is what pleases him and what pleases him is when, not only when we're saved, but when we continue through our entire Christian walk, through our entire lives, believing that he exists, believing uh, uh, his promises, and believing that he rewards those who seek him out. 
by faith, by faith. Now, what about those who are not Christians? I'm sure you know quite a few. How many times has the name of God come up? How many times has God come up in a conversation or a debate about the existence of God or Jesus or how Jesus came to us or how we're saved by his sacrifice on the, on the cross? And people look at you and think that you're believing in a fairy tale, some sort of old fable or story of some sort. And when you insist, they, they look at you like you have a screw loose. Um, or that you're weak-minded. And, and sometimes it seems that it doesn't matter how well you explain yourself, how well you talk about your faith and your experiences, that you just can't get through to them. In the rainforest, evidenced by the wrinkly passport, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, in the rainforest, uh, I had an experience that was real. It was so real that it left me tired, fatigued, and soaking wet, to tell you the truth. I had eyewitnesses that were with me. I could relay in vivid detail every aspect, every experience, every step up in the canopy, looking down on the, on the animals and, uh, and the experiences I had. Uh, I could tell you with vivid detail what I saw and what I heard and what I smelled and what I tasted and what I experienced that day in the rainforest. Yet the German guard, when I told him, just mocked me and sent me on my way laughing with his partner, not believing a thing that I had said to him. And as frustrating as it was, that did not change the truth of what I experienced, the truth of what I lived in the south of Ghana the day before. I have seen God. I have experienced evil with a fetish priestess in, uh, in a small village I had who was possessed. Uh, I, with uh, my friend um, Nick Graham, you know, we... we uh, we laid hands on this young girl to, and when we called the Holy Spirit to, to touch her and to flow through her and it just, the darkness came. It was evil, it was tangible, it was palatable, it was real. I have experienced that uh, with my friend Nick and uh, I've experienced his grace. I witnessed miracles. I have heard his voice. And, you know, even when people don't believe me, even for those people who may be indifferent, it does not change the fact that what I tell you about Jesus, about God, is the truth and it is real. God's word said that, says that he responds to those uh, and rewards those who seek him in faith, believing that he is who he says he is and he will do what he says he will do. It does not matter how other people respond to you, whether they ridicule you like the German guards tried to do to me that day with their, yes, the rainforest did it thing. Um, whether they avoid a conversation, whether they walk away, as a Christian, you have a responsibility to tell the truth, to tell what you believe. 
And whether they believe you or not, that's between them and between God. There is nothing you can do about how they respond or what they believe, but you need to cling on to what you, what the truth is for you. The next time someone makes air quotes and says the rainforest did it, just smile. Smile in the knowledge and the truth that God really did do it for you. Father, thank you for all my experiences, for my trips, for the places I've had the pleasure and to travel, for being spoiled in that sense, for the people I've met and the food I've uh, eaten and the, and the experiences that I've been exposed to and uh, the lifestyles and the cultures and uh, dancing around a fire with, with uh, local natives and it, it just, everything, Lord, everything. Father, most importantly, I thank you for you and my experiences with you and my travels with you and, and the knowledge and wisdom that you've given to me and the life that you've provided, life abundant and life eternal. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You need to pick up the phone and Call a friend, call somebody, tell them that they're not lost, not forgotten, not abandoned. Especially as the pandemic seems to be closing in on us even more once again. As the isolations are increasing, as the restrictions are increasing, the anxiety is increasing, the, the worry, the depression, all the that bag of stuff that comes with this. Will you call them, tell them they're not lost, not abandoned, not forgotten, that they are indeed loved, not only by you, but by God. And tell them that their faith is strong and they should share that faith regardless of what people believe. And to cling on to, cling on to uh, what they know and believe and trust is the truth. Life will be better. The rewards will be there. Grace will abound. I love my travels. This is an old passport, a newer, latest one. Different color. No wrinkles. <laughs> um, as I, I, I keep these things because I look through them and see the stamps and the, the names and the dates and uh, everything, that, you know, the visas and all the stuff you need to stay in the country for a prolonged period of time. Um, it just brings everything back, you know. I look at this and then close my eyes and I can see myself standing in the canopy of the rainforest. I can see myself standing uh, underneath elephants. <laughs> I come around a corner and, ho, oh, ooh, back away, back away. And, uh, and all the other critters there and, uh, and the people. And, you know, I think as we... Uh, have our scriptures... Pages are worn and wrinkled here too, aren't they? Boy, this Bible's seen better times. And uh, inside you have, I don't know, notes and arrows and writings in the ledger. Some people have a lot more. And uh, what I have here? Um, what's this? Daniel Vincent Smith. I buried this man. Uh, a very long time ago, and I, he was a fisherman and a builder and a curler. Uh, they called him the mayor of Bayside, which was a, a senior's home. 
and he loved to drive and listen to country music and, and play cards. See, I can remember this person. It's been in here for years and years and years. I, I don't take it out for that. And just like the passport, you can pick up your scriptures and look at the notes and look where it's dirtiest, where you've read the most and see where God has spoken to you and where God's wisdom has helped you and guided you, where you've received your strength and assurance, things that strengthened your faith and your belief. Marvelous. Maybe you should pick yours up and take a stroll through it. Anyway, have the very best, I'm rambling, I know. Have the very best day that you can. God bless.